Automated tests right after the commit gives a huge boost to the quality of the software and speeds up work. The sooner you find out about bugs, the easier it is to fix them. Configuring Bitbucket is easy, and you don't need separate CI servers, the tests are run in the cloud. In this video you will learn how to configure pipelines that execute the tests. Bitbucket is a Git-based source code repository hosting service owned by Atlassian. Let's go to bitbucket.org to create a code repository for our sample code. Create a new repository. This is where we will push our test scripts. I have already created a project Bitbucket 1 for previous repositories. The name of the repository will be Cypress-Test. I make the repository public because I only put sample code there. At first, only the git ignore file can be found in the repository, but when I clone the repository to the local computer, I can push test scripts there. The git ignore file can be used to define which files are not included in version control. Now the files are cloned to my local computer and then we go to the Cypress test directory. There you will find the git ignore file that Bitbucket created automatically. After that, I will install Cypress. The recommended way to install it is with npm, because it simplifies running Cypress on continuous integration servers. The npm command installs the package and any packages that it depends on. The save dev option is used to indicate that the package being installed is a development dependency. They are only needed during the development process, such as automated testing. npx Cypress Open starts the local web server and goes to its main page with a browser. I choose end-to-end -end tests, which suits my purpose well. Cypress shows the config, support and bundle files it creates and I press the continue button. I choose Chrome as the browser, but you can choose what you like. Then I click create new spec and name the test script file sauce demo. Cypress creates a template test that goes to the example.cypress.io page. I run the spec so we know the environment works. Good. It works. I press the open in IDE button, which jumps to the editor. I usually create example tests using a code generator, but unfortunately Cypress currently doesn't have any decent code generator to create web test steps and assertions, so I write the test script manually. However, the code I'm writing is very simple, so I'm sure you'll understand what it does. The test script goes to the sauce demo web page, enters the username and password clicks the login button and finally checks that the next page contains the text, products, from the web element whose class is title. I'll try to run the test and see if it works. I put headed as an argument of the command so that we can see how the test progresses in the browser window. On the CI server, tests should not be run headed, but headless, which is the default setting. Run finished and all specs passed, so we are ready to push the files to Bitbucket. I see what new files we have created by typing git status. Configuration file, test and package files. Git add marks the files to be added to the next commit and after that git status shows the files as green. Then git commit and I write first version as a comment. Finally, git push transfers the commit to the remote server and we can jump to Bitbucket's web page to see the first version. I click the reload page button so that we can see the latest changes to version control. Looks good! Then I go to the pipelines view where I can create a new pipeline to run the test automatically. I choose build and test a Node.js code because we use the Node package manager when we install our development environment. Bitbucket will generate me a bitbucket-pipelines.yml file that we can start with. The configuration of how the pipeline is run is written to this file. There you can find, for example, build environment image, run steps and commands. First, I change the build environment from the default image to the Cypress included image, which is an image created by Cypress found in Docker Hub. It suits our use well because it contains all operating system dependencies, Cypress, and browsers installed globally. I'll clean up unnecessary things a bit, for example we don't need parallel run or code linting. 
This is where we write the installation and run commands. NPMCI stands for Clean Install and is good to use in continuous integration environments. It does not install packages from the node module's cache, but uses the package lock.json file. Then the npx cypress run command, to which I add mocha awesome reporter as an argument. It creates nice looking HTML reports from the test run. Writing pipelines configurations is easy and we can already try the first run. As soon as I clicked commit, Bitbucket Cloud started running commands that I configured in the pipeline. Let's go see how the run progresses. Build and test queued and it soon changed to pulling images stage. This may take some time while Bitbucket Cloud fetches the Cypress included image. I'll speed up the video a bit so we don't have to wait for it. It took two minutes and now the image is pulled and the test can proceed. Error loading the reporter. This is what it looks like when a Bitbucket pipeline run fails. At the same time, I get a notification in my email that the run failed. I have to add that Mocha Awesome Reporter is installed before the test run. I can change the pipeline by editing the Bitbucket Pipelines.yml file and it can also be done on Bitbucket's web pages without having to push from my local machine. The benefit of editing the .yml file on Bitbucket's web pages is that Bitbucket constantly checks that you don't make mistakes when writing the lines of the YML file. NPM install Mocha Awesome and then a new commit. Bitbucket immediately started running the test in the cloud again automatically according to what was defined in the Bitbucket Pipelines.yml file. Now we didn't have to wait for the pulling image stage. Now the test passed. However, we are not ready yet. We need to add artifacts to the YML file so we can see the test run reports. Artifacts are files that are produced by a step. They are stored for a few days in the Bitbucket cloud, but if you want to keep them longer, you need to define a transfer to, for example, Amazon S3 storage. Currently, Bitbucket retains artifacts for 14 days. Mocha Awesome Reports are created by default in the Mocha Awesome Report directory. The Cypress Screenshots directory is also added, because screenshots of the test run are created there if the test fails. Two asterisks means that the artifact also stores subdirectories. The test run passed, so let's go look at the artifacts and download the Mocha Awesome reports and see what they look like. So that we can be sure that the test really went to the sauce demo site and check that the login works, I change the test so that the assertion fails. Then we see that the test really works and we see what the failed assertion looks like in the test report.
The test failed just as we expected. Expected text is wrong text, but the actual text is products. Let's check what the Mocha Awesome report looks like now and then we can also see what the screenshot of the failed test looks like. Assert expected span title to have text, wrong text, but the text was, products. If you want to add more browsers to the testing, you need to define a separate test run for all browsers in the Bitbucket Pipelines.yml file. First, I add the npx cypress info command, which prints to the log useful information for cross-browser running, such as browsers and browser versions that are installed in the build image. I know that Firefox, Chrome and Edge browsers are installed in the Cypress included image, so I will add test runs for them. The reporter options setting is added to the npx cypress run command, which sets its own name for each browser run, because otherwise each run would overwrite the previous report file. In addition, a browser parameter is of course required. I'll copy the command to all three browsers and change the report file and the browser parameter. Now we are ready to try the pipeline run. Commit and then as a comment for this version I write added cross-browser support. Bitbucket immediately starts running the pipeline, so let's go see how the run is progressing. Here you can see the npx cypress info command. If you're running tests in the cloud, it's a useful command to display browser information. There are three browsers in our build image and here you can also see their versions. The test run passed. Next. Let's take a look at the artifacts, where you should find a test report for all three browsers. The reports are in separate files, but I can also show a script that can be used to merge them into one report. If you want only one test report, you need to add Mocha Awesome Merge Package installation before test runs. After the test runs, you need to merge the .json files into one file with the npx Mocha Awesome Merge command. Finally, you run the npx Marge command, which turns the JSON file into an HTML report. Marge is not a typo, the command name is really Marge. In this chapter, we'll learn how to integrate Selenium tests to the Bitbucket pipelines. This means that whenever you upload new changes to Bitbucket's version control system, the pipeline will run the tests you've set up to ensure there are no bugs in the new code. Before we set up the Bitbucket pipeline, we need to create a test that will be used in the pipeline. If you're already familiar with Selenium, you can skip the test creation part or any other sections you're confident about. I've designed the video to be easy to follow, so even if you're new to Selenium, you'll be able to understand how the integration works. You can easily navigate through different sections of the tutorial using the progress bar in the video. We will use Sauce Labs test site, Sauce Demo, as a test target. We create an automated test that logs into the Sauce Demo site. On the product page, we search for the text, products, and we make an assertion that ensures that the login was successful.
Let's get started. First, let's go to the Bitbucket website to create a project and repository for the tests. Our repository is ready. Now let's clone it to the local computer so that we can test and edit it locally. I also create a virtual environment, so our test environment is isolated from other projects. You can find more information about virtual environment by googling Python virtual environment. Then the necessary packages are installed. We need the Py test framework and the test reporter, which makes test reports in HTML format. The last package we install is Selenium. The easiest way to create the first test with any testing framework is to first create it with an automatic code generator and then modify the test script to fit the test case. I will show you how to record a test with Selenium IDE, which is a Chrome extension that can be found in the Chrome Web Store. Record and playback tool for ease of getting acquainted with Selenium WebDriver. If you use Firefox, you can find the Selenium add-on by searching for it in Firefox browser add-ons. Let's start recording the test. First, click on the Selenium extension. It opens a new window where your test is created when you do something in the left browser window. Click record a new test in a new project. Enter the name of the project and then the base URL of the test object. When I clicked on the username field, three lines of code appeared in the right window. Open, set window size and click. When I typed the username, type command appeared. And now we are logged in. Then we look for the text, products. The assertion can also be created with the Selenium extension. Select assert text. We select the assertion target automatically with a mouse click. CSS equals dot title. The value of that element must be products. Now the test is finished and we can stop the recording. We name the test, login. Then we can export the test as Python code. Now let's jump into the editor to see what our code looks like. We use the Visual Studio Code Editor. The code looks good. 
Let's try to run the test. The test passed. We still need to make sure that when the assertion fails, the test reports an error. I write the wrong text in the assertion. It worked as we expected. We need to make one more change to the code before we can push it to version control. The web driver must be set to point to a remote address. This is because it is easiest to configure Bitbucket pipelines so that Selenium is run in a standalone image. You'll see that when we configure the pipeline. Everything is ready. Now we can push the code to Bitbucket version control. Let's jump to Bitbucket's web pages. Here is the test we created. Then we go to the pipelines view. Create your first pipeline. I choose build and test Python and we get a good template to start with. I need to remove some extra lines and add the steps we need. We don't need parallel running, and we don't need requirements installation. I need to add HTML reporter installation and Selenium installation. We also write the pytest command in a slightly different way. The reports are saved in the reports directory. We don't need the linting step, so I'll remove that too. Then we need a service where the Selenium image is run. The name of the service will be Chrome. Here we write the Docker Hub image that we use. This image runs Selenium Grid in standalone mode with Chrome. It enables us to run WebDriver tests remotely. Remotely in this case means that the tests and WebDriver are run in different images. I add the default port settings. Finally, we specify that the test step uses Chrome service and then we are done. Apparently Bitbucket doesn't accept the port settings, so I'll remove them and we'll run the test without them. I noticed that we need to change the name of the test file to the correct one. I click commit and then the pipeline starts running the pipeline. If I click the process, we can watch in real time as the test run progresses. The test passed. It is good to make one additional change to the pipeline settings so that we can see the test reports.
We have to define artifacts, which are files that are produced by a step and they are stored in Bitbucket Cloud for a few days. If you need longer storage, they can be automatically transferred to Amazon S3 or another similar service. You can save test run logs or test reports there, so I add the reports folder and all subdirectories to the artifacts. Then we push the change to Bitbucket. Note that when we push the change to Bitbucket, it automatically started running pipeline again. The test passed. Let's go see the artifacts. Next, let's try so that the assertion fails. Then we know that the test really went to Sauce Demo's web pages to check if the text of the products element was correct. Then we push the change to Bitbucket again and Pipelines automatically starts running the test again. The assertion failed, so the test works as it should. If you want to run your test on more browsers, you need to define more services that contain the specific browser's image. You need the Selenium Grid Hub image, which recognizes the grid nodes in the same network and thus you can use the nodes as a remote. In this chapter we went through how to integrate tests into Bitbucket and I leave it up to you to think about how to further develop your test environment to support cross-browser testing.